substitution property. Remember when we had our line segments and we said 4x plus 5 was this, and then we solved and got x equals 5? How did we use the substitution property here? We just plugged it in, didn't we? So we substituted our 5 in for x. That's what the substitution property means. Now, distributive property. Do we agree that 4 times x plus 5 equals 3 is equal to 4x plus 20 equals 3? Yeah. Are those two equations equal? Yeah. Yeah. That's distributive property. That's all that these properties are. There's lots of words, but you need to know what each property means and why we can solve equations like this. Okay? So, I want you guys to say which property or postulate each one of these are. Now, a hint. Two of these are properties. Two of these are postulates. Okay, you need to open up. So we can write these down. Three are kind of looking identical. That might be a hint for you. Correct, yeah. That one, so number one, yeah. Your segment position. That will be another hint. <clears throat> so one and three might look similar, might be similar. Two and four would look similar, might be similar. Measure of angle RSP. 
of drawing the RSP. And those are RSP would be that part, and PST would be that part. And they're saying if we add those two together, it equals the whole thing. Do you see that? RSP, PST equals the whole thing. So do you remember how up in part one we were adding the segments together to equal the whole thing? So guess what the name of this one is? Perfect. Angle addition postulate. Now, look at number two. Do you see her picture? Well, we don't even need to so we're saying that A B part, if we add it to the B C part, we get the whole thing. Yeah. Well what are we adding together? We're adding segments. segments. So crazy name. So segment addition posture. You know, uh, it's just talked about a while ago, right? And, and you know, even if you don't remember, it's, you, know, you can even say, well, well you're adding two parts of two segment parts to equal the big part. Yeah. That's great. So I mean you can always kind of explain two things in words if you can't remember the exact name of the posture. Uh, so one is just simply an angle or excuse me, an angle. Segment addition postulate. That's what's being identified in that if memory. And that's like the same thing. Yeah, yeah, don't say And then for two and four, I just kind of ask myself, okay, how did they go from the if part to the then part? And what did they do to both sides of the equal sign on the if part to get to the then part? That's called the addition property of equality, which basically says as long as you're adding the same number to both sides of the equal sign, it stays equal. So addition property of equality. talking about in this first one? We're talking about adding segments, right? So the name, does it have something to do with adding and segments in the name of that? Segment addition posture, right? So one way to remember it is if I'm adding parts of a segment, segment addition, keyword, right? That gives it away. I'm adding two parts of a segment, to get that whole segment, that's where we get our segment addition postulate. Now, which other number up here is similar to that segment addition postulate? Number three, except we're done with what? Angles. So I'm adding angles. Well, is there any postulate or name that has something to do with adding angles in it? What is it? Angle addition posture, right? So you guys got to think of key words that relate to all of these properties and postulates. Angle. 
it gives it away in it. I take it piece by piece that that helps you to draw the picture, draw a picture so you know. Now, look at number two. Sam, you don't need to laugh. Number two, if I'm given x equals y, what am I doing on both sides of the equation over here? I'm adding three, right? So if I'm adding a number to both sides of the equation, which property is that? What is it? Addition property. Right. So all of these properties and postulates have key words in them that are telling us what we're doing. Now, is four similar to that? What am I doing? I have x equals y to start. And then what am I doing to each side of the equation? I'm multiplying by 4. Well, is there some kind of property that has to do with multiplying? Multiplication, Multiplication property, correct? So you guys just got to take it piece by piece. What am I doing in one part? And is there something that gives it away in the name? Okay? So after looking at this, was it that difficult? After we went through it. Don't think too hard. Draw pictures. Take it piece by piece. See if there's key words. Okay? Now, there's three other properties that were on that page 107. What were they? Does anybody remember? The last... Right. <clears throat> so we have reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Now, reflexive. What's the key word in reflexive? Reflect. Reflect, right? So if I'm thinking about a mirror, I see my reflection in a mirror, what's coming right back at me? Same thing. The exact same thing. So if I just have a number, it's going to always equal itself. When I have a line segment, it's always going to equal itself. So all three of these properties apply to segments and angles and numbers. Okay, so if I had segment AB, what is that going to equal? AB. The distance of AB. What if I had the measure of angle A? It's going to equal the measure of angle A. Now, symmetric. What does being symmetric mean? Same on each side. Same on each side, kind of right. If I have A, B, let's say I have my line right here. Is that symmetrical to B equals A? Yeah. Right. So if I have a segment length, let's say that A, B equals C, D. C, D equals A, B. What about measure of angle A equals measure of angle B? Measure of angle B equals measure of angle A. So do you see the difference between reflexive and symmetric? Sometimes those get switched up. They trick us. Reflexive, think of a mirror. has to be identical. What you see is what you get back. Now, transitive. I have an example up here. Everybody agrees 25 equals 20 plus 5. Now, if 25 equals 20 plus 5, does everybody agree that 20 plus 5 equals 15 plus 10? Yeah. Right? Now, we said that these two are equal, and we said these two are equal. So we can say then that 25 equals 15 plus 10. That's still true, isn't it? That's what transitive means. We have a number equals one thing. And then that equals another, that one equals the last one. Kind of builds on each other. Okay? So we need all these properties when we're doing algebraic proofs and reasons with them. So you all know how to solve equations, right? 
pretty easy. We're going to explain each step, just like we did with our words yesterday, that little activity. Okay, this is something you guys are going to want to write down. You're going to have these on your assignment, and you're going to need to do each part of it. We will always start with something. And our reason for our first part of all of these will always have a given. So our first reason will always be given. Because we have to start with something in order to get somewhere. <clears throat> with our equation, 2x plus 5 equals 20 minus 3x. When we solve equations, what's the first step that we can do here? What are we going to do? Add the 3x. Gonna, okay. Sam wants to add our 3x to each side. So I'm adding 3x. You guys do not need this part, but I'm just showing you so we can see each step. What's 2x plus 3x? Now, the reasons are always going to be properties or postulates. Our reasons are always definitions, theorems, properties, postulates. So, if we are adding 3x to both sides, which property tells us we can add on both sides? Addition of equality. Addition property of equality. Now, I'm fine with you abbreviating things, but you need to have each part. So we need the addition, we need property, and we need the equality part. So what's the next step that we do in our equation? So if we're subtracting 5, Subtraction property. Now, if I just put sub, what other property am I going to get mixed up with? Substitution. So we need to add a couple more letters. What can we add? T. T. I'm fine with that. Step we do when we solve equations. We're dividing by five. So if I can divide on both sides, which property is that? Division. Now we're done. We're finished. But what if I gave you this? If I want from x equals 3 to 3 equals x, which, careful, reflexive tells me that symmetric. Yes, symmetric. Because reflexive tells me what? That number has to equal that same number. Is 3 and x the exact same thing? No. No. So this is the symmetric. Property. So when we write everything down, we don't need that. The you don't need this middle column. On homework, you will need all of this, and you will need all of this. Question? Do we have to do the last one? Nope. This part you do not need to do. 
we're showing because there's an example on this next one that I want you to know the difference between reflexive and symmetric. Does everybody have this down? You're going to try an example on your own.